And finally, the fourth point I want to talk about very, very briefly is Isaiah 39, this last chapter in 1st Isaiah, the Babylonian delegation visiting Hezekiah. The function of this little episode is to establish a connection between the Babylon of the, uh, the people who come, especially the leader, Merodach Baladan, and the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. It's quite possible that Merodach Baladan did send emissaries to Hezekiah as he was trying to get to throw Assyria off his back. This is the growing power of Babylon. And he was trying in the, in, uh, the countries close to um, Judea to get them on his side too. Now the episode shows us Hezekiah doing something a bit naive. Hezekiah showed the messengers his treasure house. The silver, the gold, the spices, the precious oil, his armory too, and everything there was in his storehouse. There was nothing Hezekiah didn't show them in his palace or in his whole domain. We don't know why he did, but he did. He showed it. Isaiah then questions Hezekiah about all this. And he finds out that these emissaries come from a far country, from Babylon, which evokes a little bit a sense of foreboding. Then Isaiah says, The days are coming when everything in your palace, everything your ancestors have amassed until now, will be carried off to Babylon. Not a thing will be left. The old order will collapse, and all will end up in exile and Babylon, from where God will call forth his people into a new exodus. God has plans of peace and blessing for his people beyond national disaster. God will perform new things and establish a new order, which of course begins so magnificently, so majestically, so wonderfully, in the very next chapter of Isaiah, chapter 40, the beginning of the grand prophet, second Isaiah. This is sometimes called this section of Isaiah 40 to 55, the book of the consolation of Israel. And it's to that that sometime, please God, we will move. So the prophet Isaiah, who lived in the 730, who was a prophet from the 730s down to 701 BC, over 40 years, is a grand figure. We've come to see his extraordinary faith in God in times of national disaster under King Ahaz and now under King Hezekiah. He's the prophet that says, don't worry. Don't be afraid. Even though the world is collapsing around you, have trust in God. He's the prophet who speaks of God as the Holy One, as the Lord of history, as the one who will ensure that his people survive, whatever happens. And he's the prophet, of course, uh, who in many ways prepares us for Jesus, because so much of how he saw himself and how he saw the, the, the coming uh, kingdom of God uh, finds its uh, fulfilment in the in the ministry of Jesus, and much of uh, what he says is taken up by the gospel writers as a description of who Jesus is. So this man, this extraordinary figure, who lived way back in the eighth century B.C., somehow or other um, becomes alive again through the mission and the teaching and the life of the Lord himself. But of course, so does second Isaiah, and another extraordinary figure who comes a hundred or so years after the first Isaiah. So Isaiah and the school of Isaiah um, are remarkable really, and are 
very, very important for us in trying to understand a little more the mystery of Jesus of Nazareth.